G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our backyard farm. I've often been asked how we use certain um, plants that we grow here because people aren't very familiar with them. Um, plants like the, the kangkong, the Okinawan spinach and also the warrigal greens are quite foreign to some folks out there. Yet we find uh, here in our climate they do grow a lot better than some of the more traditional plants like your chards, English spinach and lettuce. They tend to be a little bit more pest and disease resistant and also because they are heat loving plants generally they do um, stop from going to seed or bolting to seed very quickly. Um, English spinach and lettuce notoriously go to seed very quick in our warm climate. So just quickly I thought I'd run through a couple of these plants and then how we use them once they hit the kitchen. Now kangkong, also known as Chinese spinach, um, kangkung or just water spinach, is a plant that really does very well in our aquaponic system. It's a very versatile plant we use as a salad green and also use in um, cooked meals. One way we've been enjoying the kangkong lately is as a braised vegetable. What we do is pretty much we'll harvest them once the little um, shoots from the main stem reach about 30 to 40 centimetres. We take them up into the house, give them a bit of a wash and separate the leaves from the stems. The stem sections are then cut into about 50 to 75 mil or about um, two to three inch sections. From there, we pretty much will add some oil into a hot wok, toss in the kangkong stems, some chopped beans, sliced green capsicum, throw in a little bit of minced ginger, some garlic, and a few splashes of Chinese rice wine, um, soy sauce. The leaves are then stirred through and left to wilt for a minute or two, and then the veggies are served. Purslane is one weed that we have popping up around the place here, and I guarantee that um, the majority of you folks watching probably have it in your yard at some point in time. Normally, most folks treat it as a weed and pull it out and throw it in the compost bin. Um, but here, we like to nurture little stands of it and then use it in dishes like mainly salads up until this point. Um, it's actually a very nutritious weed if you want to call it a weed, that is very high in omega-3 fatty acids as well as other nutrients. As I said in the past, we've normally been using it um, in salads, just chopping off small little stems and putting them in a toss salad. But I recently stumbled across a South Sudanese recipe called Rajala stew. Uh, Rajala uh, meaning purslane, and sorry if I've butchered the pronunciation there. Recently I sowed out a barrel with some amaranth seed and unfortunately it's been taken over with purslane. But that has given me the opportunity to um, try out this stew, so I'm pretty grateful in that respect. So the purslane that was harvested for this stew um, was pretty much all taken off as little seedlings. I uh, just pulled them out by the roots, snipped off the roots, popped them in the bowl, took them up the house and gave them a little bit of a wash. As for the dish itself, the other ingredients we used was some locally sourced goat, red lentils, about 300 grams of the chopped purslane, one large onion chopped fairly small, some ground cumin, ground coriander, a couple of crushed cardamom pods, some crushed garlic, tomato paste and water. From what I've seen, lamb and goat is traditionally used, but I have stumbled across a couple of recipes online that did allow for beef as well. To begin with, we browned off the onion and goat in a pot that had a tablespoon or so of oil in it. We then added in the spices and garlic. This was cooked for a couple of minutes just to help release the flavours of the spice. We then added some water, the lentils, the tomato paste, and it was left to simmer with the lid on. About every five minutes or so it was stirred to make sure nothing stuck to the base. At about the 20 minute mark, the purslane was stirred in and left to simmer for five to 10 minutes, and it was given a taste test at around the 10 minute mark. At that point, we decided it needed a little bit more spice, so we doubled up on the cardamom, cumin, and coriander. And then it was served up and garnished with some fresh dill. It's actually become a bit of a favorite here and we've cooked it up three or four times. The last batch we made up had some Brazilian spinach and some kangkong leaves added because I'd run out of warrigal greens. Also tossed in a little bit of the ginger I harvested from the aquaponics the other day and some little sunshine chilies as well just to spice it up a bit. This lot was served with some fried halloumi cheese because Kira's not too keen on goat and lamb and it went down an absolute treat. Warrigal greens, also known as New Zealand spinach, has pretty much well become our um, English spinach substitute here. It's actually a, an indigenous plant to the Pacific region and also the west coast of South America. What we tend to do with the warrigal greens is harvest it in big batches, process it and then freeze it for later use. This basket here was harvested from a bed that was removed to make way for the new chook pen. What I like to do is strip off the leaves and cut the young stems into about 40 to 50 mil sections or inch and a half to two inch sections. 
The leaves and stems are then blanched for about a minute and then set aside in a colander to drain and cool. Once cooled, the greens are given a good squeeze to remove any of the excess water and packed away to be popped in the freezer. So these three containers of Warrigal greens have already been used. Two lots went into the um, Rajala stew, and I told you we really liked it. And the third lot went into a um, spinach pasta sauce that Bee likes to make up. It's a pretty basic pasta sauce. It's got some thickened cream, the chopped spinach, some cullen salami. Um, Bee likes to chop it thinly and then quarter it. Some sliced mushrooms and garlic, lots of garlic. Uh, I must say it is a very tasty dish and very versatile. Uh, we've made it using a couple of different salad greens. Um, we wanted some the other night, or Kira wanted some the other night. So we used some Brazilian spinach and again the cancong just to fill out the greens portion and cooked it up pretty much all the same way. The only way I think we could pretty much well improve on it is by adding some finely diced sunshine chilies, which Kira wouldn't be happy with, and maybe some sliced Spanish black olives. Now we use a lot of these greens just in sauce salads as well, which you'll, you'll see in a uh, pumpkin clip I'm going to add in, and also two of my favourite curried egg sandwiches. What we've got here is some Chinese lettuce, also known as celtus, some rabbit ear lettuce, some mokinau and spinach, and some kangkong. Um, with those guys, I just rip the leaves off, give them a bit of a wash, and I've tossed them onto a curried egg sandwich. Just added some mashed avocado to both the slices of bread, piled on some curried egg, just made with Japanese mayo and my favourite um, curry spice mix, and then just added loads of leafy greens. It makes for a really filling meal, uh, definitely gives you enough get up and go to finish the rest of the day after lunch. Just to finish off, I thought I'd show you a bit of an off-the-cuff uh, video Bianca and I shot one night, uh, just to show the folks over on Patreon how we were using some of the harvest from the aquaponics and a small pumpkin I picked from the hoop house. So um, it's definitely not up to the uh, YouTube chef standard, so that's why it went over to Patreon and not here, but I've added it in for you just to have a bit of a gander at how we use some of the harvest from the patch. So there you go folks, a nice little bag of greens from the system. I did pull out more Brazilian spinach than I need. Um, some of it may end up in the frittata itself. But all these greens will go in the salad tonight. Um, we'll probably take it easy on the rabbit ear lettuce and um, pop some in the fridge for um, curried egg and lettuce sandwiches, a bit of a favourite here. But the rest of this should all be chowed down on tonight. So there you go. G'day patrons, so I'd just do a quick little clip for you guys showing you um, how I'm making up tonight's meal. Basically just got half of that small little pumpkin um, from the clip the other day and diced it up small, popping it into a bowl. I'm going to pour some oil in there, just enough to coat them a little bit. Just going to mix it around with a spoon because I don't want it all over the hands. Pop it straight on the tray. Normally I'd dust them with something, but tonight I'm not going to worry. So I'm going to put some, um, uh, what am I going to put in? Some coriander and maybe some other bits and pieces in with the actual um, frittata. So these are just going in the oven now just till I can um, stick a fork through them. So it's about 180 degrees for about 10-15 minutes I think. So I'd forgotten how mucilaginous the Malabar spinach was so I sort of fried it off with some bacon and just to get some of the moisture out of it. So to make up for that, I'm going to put in one of the extra branches of Brazilian spinach I snipped off to give the garlic some light. So I'll strip those leaves and they can go in as well. And the pumpkin's also done too. So I'm just going to let it cool for a little while. Um, B and I just have to run out for an errand. So while I'm out, I'll grab some feta cheese as well to pop in this because I don't have any in the fridge. So when I come home, I'll um, probably crack about six or seven eggs, get all this together and I'll show you. Not too sure what seasoning I'm going to use yet. I was thinking coriander and cumin, but I might use one of my curry blends that we've got. So pretty much all ready to go now. Just need to um, season the eggs, I think. A little bit of pepper in. Do to put some salt in? Just a little bit. And I'm also using a um, curry blend. It's a mild curry blend and a little um, grinder. Something we've um, really enjoying in this dish. Well, I do. Things I cook it, they got to put up with it. Yes. But it is nice. No, it is good. But it's um, whole seed, seeds, like you can probably see the cumin and the coriander in there. So, gives it a nice, refreshing flavour. Mmm, and a seedy. So, just mix that through there. Just to make it look more impressive, we'll just add more in. There we go. 
There you go, folks. Just more impressive, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Beautiful. So, next, next um, pumpkin. We'll pop the pumpkin in the pan. And just all the other fixings. And we'll pour the egg over the top and um, mix it around. And me onions. Oops. Uh, a lot of greens. A lot of greens. Yeah, but they're not very. They're no. not very oniony. No. And they'll wilt down and look all pretty. Yeah. So are we ready for the gooks? Just um. remove my beard hair from frame. Oh, I, I think I may have overdone it. We'll eat it. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. I could always put more eggs in. Yeah, I was just thinking, do you want some more egg? Yeah, maybe do another three. Yeah. Where'd you put them? Um, over near the small bench. Oh. <gasps> Feta! Oh, oh sacrilege! Toss in the feta. That's that's a lot of feta. It's not really. It's just that it's cut up small, so it looks like a lot. Okay. You can tell we're real pros here, folks. Yeah. We, we have a couple of chefs that will be watching this, Bianca. We'll probably well, be. All I can say is I'm sorry. <laughs> there we go. I think Kira's doing the dishes tonight. <laughs> so now she's going in the oven about 140 to 60. It's hard because all our markings have rubbed off. So there we go, folks. She's all done. Oh, it smells delightful. So anyway, um, I'll just plate this up and give you a bit of a look at what she's like inside. So we have a nice, lovely plate of frittata and salad from the patch so I'm pretty chuffed with that what do you say feed me <laughs> so um, I, I will be honest though Bianchi gets the broken one with not much pumpkin don't care. don't care so there you go hope you enjoyed the look at um, making the little frittata I'm absolutely famished so I'm gonna go polish this off hope you all have a top one cheers guys what you going to say goodbye? Bye. Feed me. Come on. Feed. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that um, off-the-cuff pumpkin and spinach frittata, folks. So as you can see, the, the greens we grow here in the aquaponics and around the place are fairly versatile. We use them in salads and cooked meals as well. I do know a lot of you folks who um, follow us grow um, these plants and similar ones. It would be great if you could um, share with others down in the comments how you like to use them, um, the meals you like to cook with them, and maybe some different varieties that I might like to have a crack at and other viewers as well. While I'm at it, I'd like to thank all you folks who do comment in the comment section below and everyone else who just comes along to check out the clips and say g'day. Uh, I really do appreciate the feedback we get and also the, the suggestions. You folks out there have helped me a lot over the last five or so years. Um, I've found it quite invaluable at times. Uh, just to let you um, diehards know as well, uh, Kira and I started mucking around with bits and pieces on the chook coop during the week, the new chicken pen. Uh, we're just moving bits and pieces around and seeing how we'd like to situate it. And yesterday Bianca came out and I think we've pretty much all nutted out a bit of an idea. I also need to send out a huge thank you to all the wonderful folks who are supporting us over on Patreon and in particular the super patrons. You can find their links in the description below. If you're not too sure what Patreon is or maybe you do know and you want to support us further, there'll be a link at the end of the clip you can click on and just go over to Patreon and you can have a bit of a gander at some of the things I'm posting on the wall there for the Patreons who support us. So I think I better wrap it up. The rain's found me under the mango tree. I do hope that you've enjoyed the clip and that your own gardens and aquaponics are booming. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers, folks. Have a top one.